Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So today in this particular video, we are going to take 10 tricky questions which were asked from main group elements and this is a topic which require a lot of like a uh, lo lot of reading for this. You need to understand the concept, you need to remember the tricks, you need to remember the text informations and you need to know a lot of exceptional cases in this, right? So that's how the main group element has to be approached. I hope most of you have covered this particular topic. So today in this particular video, I'm going to take 10 tricky questions which were asked from the previous few years of main group elements. I hope this will just give you a quick type of revision for the different types of concepts. And we'll try to also understand that which, which concepts are involved, what are the tricks which you can apply to solve questions. So let's start with it. Now before starting this video, uh, I would like to inform you that I have my classes running on an Academy Plus. I teach over there for CSINET category and the complete course is being running over there. Uh, right now a revision course is running on so if you guys are interested in joining an academy plus you can join so by using my referral code and all the informations regarding joining the an academy plus is given in the description of this video now having said that let's start with our video Alright guys, let's talk about this question over here which was asked in CSIR December 2019 exam and the question says that the ion having the highest bond order. So I guess you all know about it in case you don't know there is a trick to solve these kind of questions where you have diatomic molecules and you have to find out the bond order. Okay. So the trick goes very simply that if you have total number of valence electron here uh, or you have to calculate the total number of electrons basically over here and if that electron goes like 14 in that case you will have a bond order of 3 okay let's say if you have 15 electrons 16 electrons 17 electron and 18 electron or you have 13 electrons 12 electron 11 electron or 10 electron in that case your bond order will decrease on the either side okay if you have 15 it will be 2.5 then 2.0 then 1.5 and then 1.0 so your bond order decreases by 0 0.5 unit whenever you uh, when you whenever you get go ahead or you go back okay so here again it will be 2.5, 2.0, uh, 1.5 and 1.0. So that's how it will be done. Now if I talk about the options over here, so NO plus will have how many electrons? So nitrogen is going to have the total electrons in the nitrogen basically is going to be 7 and plus oxygen is going to have 8 electrons. So 7 plus 8 and because of this positive charge, I would subtract 1 from here. So you will see that uh, you are going to get 14 in this case, okay, 14 electrons. If I talk about O2 plus, so O2 plus is going to have, since each oxygen has 8 electrons, so 8 plus 8 and minus 1 for the positive charge. So again, you got 15 electrons in that. N2 plus is going to have like uh, 7 uh, plus 7 and minus 1 for this positive charge. So you are going to have a total of your uh, 13 electrons in this case then you have c2 plus for c2 plus you are going to have 6 plus 6 and minus 1 because of this positive charge so overall you got uh, 11 electrons so now you can easily see that which how much bond order you have for no plus it goes here okay so this is for your no plus if you talk about o2 plus so for that this is your o2 plus okay if i talk about n2 plus so your N2 plus goes in here, okay, this is your N2 plus. If we talk about C2 plus, so that goes in here, okay, this is your C2 plus. So the highest bond order is for option number one, that is NO plus, okay, because of 14 electrons in the, like the total number of 14 electrons. So that's how it goes. This is the simplest trick how you can approach it and this was the simplest question which could be asked from the main group elements, all right. So let's go for the next question then. Alright, the next question says that the magnitude of the bond angles in the gaseous NF3, SBF3 and uh, SBCl3 follows the order. So what's the order of that? In order to solve these types of question, again, you have tricks to do it. The first trick, okay, the first trick is that you have to look for the electronegativity of the central atom, okay. So electronegativity, electronegativity of central atom. So if the electronegativity of the central atom increases, what happens to the bond angle? 
so the bond angle also increases okay that's the first point which you have to make it very clear now the second point which will uh, define this is electronegativity of surrounding atom okay so electronegativity electronegativity of surrounding atom okay surrounding atoms so if this increases if electronegativity of the surrounding atom increases in that case your bond angle your bond angle decreases okay so these are the two points which you have to keep in mind now taking on these particular two points you can see that in our case we have nitrogen and so the central atom here is nitrogen the central atom is antimony here also it is antimony okay so uh, if you look upon the electronegativity so electronegativity order okay of central atom this goes like this nitrogen is more electronegative than your antimony so obviously uh, the nf3 which will be pyramidal in shape will have more bond angle as compared to the antimony compounds so nitrogen compound or nf3 will have higher bond order because of the first point okay remember this point dominates on the second one so you have to look for the first point first and then go for the second one if the central atom is same then you have to go for the electronegativity of the surrounding atom so on the first point which says ki nitrogen will have more electronegativity uh, suggest me that either my option number 1 is correct or option number 4 is correct you can simply cancel out option number 2 and 3 now looking for the electronegativity electronegativity order electronegativity order of surrounding atom so in that particular case we will see that uh, fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine so right now i'm going to decide between SF, sbf3 and sbcl3 okay now among sbf3 and sbcl3 your sbf3 is more electronegative right and you know that the electronegativity of surrounding atom increases so bond angle will decrease so what will happen with sbf3 the bond angle of sbf3 will be smaller than sbcl3 it's as simple as that so the correct option comes out to be your option number 4 so this is how you have to approach this particular question in which you just have to look upon the electronegativity and just based upon these two points you can answer it so any question related to your bond angle can be done with the help of this particular trick so that's how your option number 4 is your correct option let's go to the next question all right the next question says that the species which which the shape or the geometry can be predicted by vsepr theory now vsepr theory is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and you know that this theory is used to identify the structure of the molecules of your main group elements it is not applicable on the coordination com complexes because coordination complexes follow valence bond theory so if you look upon these options over here your a option does not cannot be predicted through vsepr theory because it's a platinum tetrachloride ptcl42 minus and its structure will be predicted by valence bond theory not by the vsepr theory so you can just simply cancel out option number a now you are left out with option number so the options which have a you can just cancel them out option number 1 and option number 4 will get cancelled out right now you have to look for this tecl6 and pf3s f6 okay so which of them is correct now if you have studied vsepr theory you might have studied the limitations of that as well so in the limitation of that we have studied this particular complex let me explain you so if you take tecl6 2 minus if i talk about the central atom the central atom already has six valence electrons and apart from those six valence electron you have two negative charge so two electrons more so overall it has eight electrons on the central atom now if it pairs up with the like with the chlorine atoms six chlorine atom are going to form bond with the eight atoms so uh, let's consider them as let's say these are the eight electrons of your uh, like 1 2 3 4 5 6 Seven and eight. Okay, these are the eight electrons of your terrarium. Now, with that, chlorine atom is going to form bond. So, one of them is going to form bond with chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Only six because there are six chlorine. So, six bond pair. So, how many bond pair did I got? So, bond pair are six. And how many lone pair did I got? Lone pair is one. Now, but the structure of this TeCl six remains uh, like perfect octahedral or identical. identical octahedral okay so the structure remains identical octahedral because of the six bond pair why does it happens it's because of the bigger size of this uh, terrarium okay the bigger size of this is going to allow us to 
keep this one lone pair as an inactive lone pair okay so this one lone pair is called as stereochemically stereochemically inactive lone pair okay so although there is a bond six bond pair and one lone pair the hybridization should have been like that but it is seen that the hybridization of this particular complex is your p3d3 okay these are all exceptional cases in your vscpr theory if you have studied it it's good if you have not studied just try to understand it okay so tecl6 will have a hybridization of it does not require like the s orbitals are not involved in the bond formation those lone pair are actually involved in the or they are present on the s orbital so it's like p3 uh, d3 is the hybridization okay this is the uh, hybridization shape is identical octahedral and one lone pair is stereochemically inactive lone pair so it does not counts as the lone pair and that's why vscpr theory cannot be applicable or it cannot be applied on option number b so it's it comes in the exceptional cases of your vscpr theory where you cannot apply it actually so b also you can cancel out the only thing which can be predicted through vscpr theory is your c option that means your option number c only is the correct option for this particular question so in order to answer this you just need to know all these things about tecl6 and this will you, this you will only know by studying by revising by understanding the concepts okay so that's how it will be done i hope this is much clear to you let's go to the next question now. all right so the next question over here is from your acid base theory uh, also called as your non aqueous solvent theory so i have not made a video on that yet but if you guys will tell me in the comment section uh if you want a video on uh, that particular topic i can explain that and i can make a video on that right so it says that among these complexes these among these molecules so2 ohf uh then you have ch3coh then you have lithium fluoride lif and you have h2o the compounds which behave as base in liquid hf is so which of the following compound behave as base in liquid hf okay so the theory is pretty simple what does it says that if let's say you have uh, certain things okay let's say let's say if you if you know about the ph values okay i'll just explain you based upon the ph value so if you have ph value and let's say there are four compounds a b c and d these are the four compounds and if you know the ph of all of them in the ph uh, like table or in the ph line it lies like this that is a is here b is here c is here and d is here let's say the ph of this is uh 1.0 it's like 2.1 this is like 3.5 and this is like 4.0 okay let's say these are the different ph values and if i have to check that which of these are going to behave as base in b okay in the non aqueous solvent b so what which of them is going to behave as base so those which have lower ph than that they are going to behave as base so c and d over here are going to behave as base in b and a is going to behave as acid in b okay so that's what it is so this is pretty simple you just can identify on the basis of their acidic strength that what are uh, what are the things which are going to behave as base in that all right so that's how it will be now you are given with this you are having so2 ohf okay that's one of them then you have ch3 cooh then you have lif then you have h2o and apart from that you have to check all of them in liquid hf okay so you, this is your b or this is the compound with which reference you have to check for the others you know that the first one is your super acid okay this is your super acid it's a well known uh, acid and it's it's one of the strongest acid its ph is like very very low okay it's like 0 to 1 so its ph is very low so this is your super acid this is the weak acid we all know water is a neutral compound lif is also having your uh, ph around 6 uh, or 5 okay so these are the compounds which have now let's talk about liquid hf liquid hf is a strong acid you know that strong acid will have ph around 2 to 3 so that means these all three of them are going to lie below that okay so they all will behave as c and d with respect to this okay so if this is hf then this is uh, like the other groups like ch3 coh lif and water so all these three CH3COH LIF and water are going to behave as the base in liquid hf so option d is correct one more way let's say you don't know about the ph and all you you know the concept 
you don't know the ph value so how you will identify this question you can approach this question in a very simple way you know the ph of water right water is having a ph of uh, 7 and you know that liquid hf will have acidic ph so obviously liquid hf will lie left to the water right it will lie over here and water will rise somewhere here so water will behave as a base in liquid hf so the only option which carries water is option number 4 so in that we also you can approach towards this particular question you should know about this particular theory that what uh, behaves as acid and what behaves as base in what okay so that's what is about all right understood this one let's go to the next one then. all right these all were four marker questions okay which have which we have discussed apart from the first one which first and the second one leaving that rest three of them were four marker question from csr december 2019 okay let's take this question it says the correct statement for the dithionite and dithionate ion from the following okay now you have dithionite and dithionate uh if you have studied sulfur chemistry and if you have studied the compounds see in every block in every family like carbon family oxygen family uh the nitrogen family in all of them you will have certain oxo acids of them okay like phosphorus oxo acids are there sulfur oxo acids are there so you should study the structures of of them and that's what is question is from okay so the structure and the bonding and other things of your uh, dithionite and dithionate is being asked so if you talk about dithionite so it's like s2o4 2 minus so or you can write it down like uh, h2s2o4 this is your dithionic dithionic acid okay dithionic acid that's what it is and then you have this 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 is this goes like dithionite okay dithionite and the other one is your s2 O six two minus okay, or you can have H two S two O six. This is your di ionate. Okay, the acid corresponding to this is di ionic acid, and this is di thionate acid. Okay, so that's what it is. All right, now once you know about these acids and the uh, the structures of them, uh, you can easily answer it. So. first of all the oxidation states of sulfur in both of them so if you calculate the oxidation state of sulfur in dithionite uh, that is going to be like you have s2o4 2 minus so if you calculate it 2x minus 8 is equals to minus 2 so x will come out so 8 will go that side and 2 plus 8 is 6 divided by 2 is 3 so it will come out plus 3 and when you calculate it for this so your x will come out to be plus 5 okay so that's what it is so you have oxidation state of plus 3 and plus 5 that's a correct statement so option number c is the correct one which says that the oxidation state of sulfur is plus 3 and plus 5 respectively yes that's correct okay now next is both of them are dianionic acid yes both of them are dianionic acid because you have two minus in both of them right you can see that both of them have two minus so yes the both of them are dianionic acid talking about the structures of them so s2o4 will be given by this okay uh, sorry your s2o4 2 minus will be given like this that's your first one and your s2o6 2 minus is like uh, that will be given by this okay so that's how it will be so that's what is the compound that's what is the structure of them both of them contain sulfur sulfur bond yes that is true the third the fourth statement which says that sulfur in the dithionate that means here has a lone pair of electron no it does not have because all the six electrons of sulfur are, in, are involved in bond formation so fourth one is incorrect okay so fourth one is incorrect so statement number a b and c are correct statements regarding this now this question is purely based upon if you know the concept or if you have studied that topic that's all if you have not studied you will not be able to do if you have done it easily you can answer that question right so it's purely based upon what you have studied and what not all right uh let's go to the next question then all right guys let's take this question from csir june 2019 exam and it was a two marker question the question says that consider the following reaction the reaction is between mercury uh, ion hg2 plus and you are reacting with some halide and you are getting hgx so it says that the stability constant uh, for this particular complex 
for X, it can be any halide like chlorine, chlorine or bromine. What is the order of that? So to answer this question, you should be good at this particular concept that is H S A B. Okay, hard and soft acid base theory. So you know that this theory tells me that hard acid, okay, it tries to uh, like it tries to form with a bond with a hard base. Okay, so it tries to form bond with the hard base, whereas a soft acid tries to form bond with the soft base. Okay, that's what your hard acid and hard hard acid and soft acid base theory is it's pretty simple now you have to look for this now in this given molecule or in this particular given example given reaction uh, mercury uh, ion which is hg2 plus this is basically a soft acid right it's a soft acid because it's a ion formed by your like it's a it's going to have a d10 configuration and it's a transition metal Ion, so it will be a soft acid. Now it will try to form bond with a soft base. If I try to talk about these complexes, sorry, these ions, that means your halides. So among them, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, the softest one. Okay. Now bromine is the softest one. Then comes chlorine and fluorine. Okay. So bromine is soft, whereas fluorine is hard. Okay. That's your hard base. So your mercury is going to form bond with the bromine one first okay so the stability of hgbr uh, plus will be quite more as compared to the other ones why because because of the hsab principle right so soft acid will try to form bond with the soft base so this is soft base and this is hard base right so because fluorine f minus is basically a conjugate base of a strong acid so that's why uh, or 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 a hard acid. That's why. Okay, so you might have studied this concept. I know you guys understood it. So let's look upon the options now. So bromine should be highest. Then goes your chlorine, and the least stability will be with the fluorine. So the answer should be your option number A. Okay. So that's how it has to be done. All right. So I hope this is much clear to you. Let's go to the next question. Okay, this question was pretty simple to approach. Okay, I'll tell you a very different way to approach this. Okay, if I don't know anything about it, how I can approach this question? This was a four marker question. Okay, it was a four marker question. Uh, it says in the synthesis of poly uh, dimethyl siloxane, the chain forming branching and terminating agent respectively are. Okay, so which of them is that? So if you talk about the first one, you have uh, silicon over here. You have methyl groups. Okay, and you have chloride like this. Okay, then the other one is like you have silicon. Okay, then you have three methyl groups, three methyl groups, and you have chlorine over here. And the third one was your uh, silicon, and you are having one of the methyl group, and you are having three chlorine in this side, right? So which of them will behave as what? Now try to understand this in this way. If you just don't know anything about the complex, right? You don't know anything about them, then also you can easily approach. Remember that this uh, these silicon halides which are given to you, they are going to be they are going to form branch or they are going to get linked to these halogens, right? Through these halogens, they are going to get linked. Okay, so these are just just mark these linking sites. Okay, now just look upon them that. If I talk about this particular one, this can link from only one side, right? It's just like you have to build some train or something, but this is one of the bogie which can just join from one end, okay? Which can only join from one end. So where you have to keep this bogie or where it can be kept, it should be kept at the terminal end or it should be kept at the end, okay? Because after that, you cannot extend your uh, chain, okay? The chain will be ending over there. So in that way, you can understand that this particular one will be your terminating terminating agent okay one is sorted if i talk about these two both of them can extend from two sides this also can extend from two sides this also can extend from two sides that means both of them can be used for making the chain but this particular one has one more advantage that you can extend it from in one more direction so two directions uh, like to increase the chain and one for the branching so this particular one can be used for branching okay Whereas this particular one will be used for the chain formation. Understood? So just by looking into the position of the chlorine, you can answer this. 
you don't need any other uh, like understanding of it it's just based upon your common sense and you can just apply that to approach these types of questions so uh, chain forming the first one will be this that is uh, me2cl2 branching uh, me3 si uh, me for branching you need uh, this right so me2 si cl2 should be at the first so that's not in option number c and apart from that other options have that yeah so for chain formation you need me2 si cl2 for branching you need uh, me si cl3 and for terminating agent you need mi me3 si cl so that's your option number b what about this can i make any branching with this can i do anything with this no this is of no use okay it cannot form any chain from that so it will remain as a individual species so it cannot be used for anything neither chain formation neither branching neither terminating so this cannot be your answer so that's how your correct answer is option number b all right uh, let's go for the next question then. all right let's look upon this particular question which was again asked for four marks in your csa june 2019 exam uh, it was about your boron chemistry right it says he is a correct statement regarding boron among the following okay these are the following statements given first one says nuclear spin of 11b is greater than that of 10b so that's from the concept i guess you might have studied this in your nuclear chemistry as well but yeah let's talk about that later it says that the polarities of bh bond and ch bond are opposite fine the next says that the cross section of neutron absorption for 10 boron is much more than that of 11 boron uh, then the fourth says that B reacts along, uh, with boiling uh, aqueous NaOH solution to form NaBOH whole 4. Now let's look upon these options one by one. So let's look upon second statement first of all. So BH bond and CH bond, if I talk about the electronegativity, so your hydrogen has electronegativity of 2.1 whereas boron has an electronegativity of 2.04. So if I look upon them, so your boron will have delta positive charge and hydrogen will have delta negative charge. If I talk about CH, so here hydrogen has 2.1 but uh, carbon has around 2.4. Okay, So carbon will be delta negative and hydrogen will be delta positive. What's the sign or what's the direction of the polarities? So the polarity direction is reverse you can see. right? So if I look upon the polarity, so there, that is how the polarity dipole moment of this goes and the dipole moment of this goes in this direction so that's in the different direction uh, like that are opposite to each other so that's a correct statement okay if i talk about the nuclear spin of boron 11 and that of boron 10 so boron 10 has a nuclear spin of uh, 3 okay whereas 11b has a nuclear spin of 3 by 2 these are the i values okay i values so it says that this is this is means it's 1.5 so it says the 11b has a, a like i value greater than that of 10b that's a wrong statement okay that's not correct statement so first is wrong so you can cancel out the option which has option um, like which has first statement as correct second is quite correct okay uh, the option which does not have second that also you can cancel out so option number c also you can cancel out now looking in option number three and four the fourth says that the boron reacts with boiling aqueous NOH to form NaBOH whole 4. That does not happen. Remember that boron does not react with uh, the, uh, the base like that. Okay, so it does not react with aqueous NaOH. So it gives you no reaction up till the normal temperature. Like up till 500 degrees Celsius, it does not react. At very high temperature, it may react. But at lower temperatures it does not react or at the normal temperatures it does not react rather than that your boron reacts with alkali metals uh, rather than going with the reaction with alkali hydrides okay so hydroxide so that's why option number four is a wrong statement so that tells us that third is correct but yet if you have studied nuclear chemistry the similar question was asked based upon the cross section in uh, 2017 june exam Okay, that was a numerical based upon this. So it says that a cross section of nu uh, neutron absorption for 10 boron is much more than that of 11 boron. That's correct. For 10 boron, the cross section for the neutron absorption for 10 boron is quite high. Okay, it's somewhere around 4000 bar. Okay, that's the unit of your uh, neutron absorption, cross section of neutron absorption. 
whereas for 11b this is very small value 0.004 bar okay so that's what is the difference between them so option number uh, 3 is also correct so answer is option number 1 which says second and third are correct it's just based upon the terms and the concepts of your boron if you have studied it you could have answered this question easily all right guys so that's all for this particular video i hope that whatever we have discussed in this class was helpful to you you guys understood it well you uh, have if you have any doubt if you want to ask anything you can ask me in the comment sections below and if you have any request for the next video you can ask you can drop that also in the comment section below so thank you so much for joining and do like the video if you have uh, like it and do share it with your friends and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already so thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for watching this particular video and uh, that's all from my side thank you so much take care bye, -bye.